And that was a Hillary email point. But, David, here's the thing. <laughs> the Obama's defenders also said the market went up on Obama's watch. I mean, if you want to do the reporting correctly, media, report that, too. Okay, this is, is this just plain hypocrisy with how the media is reporting this right now? They didn't give the president any credit for the economic gains. Go ahead. It's actually media malfeasance, and boy, am I glad to be on with the capitalist pig, Jonathan, I love you, <laughs> because while they're looking at the American markets only, if you go across the board, the, the DAX, the Hang Seng, the FTSE 100, look across the board around the world, this is a correction, and as Jonathan said, EMAC, we're up. The media malfeasance is that they want to give Trump all the blame whenever it's possible and all the credit never goes to him but goes to Obama. So you kind of have to ignore the markets or the media rather on the markets and look at the guys like Jonathan Emac, look at people like yourself yep. who understand how things work and you got the triggers, you got the electronic sell off, the buyers out there. This is natural if our economy has grown that much and we have a correction, we can bear the correction because the fundamentals in the economy are way stronger than yeah, they have you been know, for the past Jonathan, 8 to 12 years. Yeah, Jonathan and to David Webb's point, there's always concerns that the robots, the algorithms are painting the tape or doing intra-trading that the, the regulators can't see. This is a period of high volatility and high anxiety. What are your worries about electronic, no. electronic trading right now? Watch this, $21 trillion in central bank money printing around the world uh, since the financial collapse. That's a factor as well, right? The robots and, and the central bankers. There's two elements you're talking about here. I mean, that, that, Liz, the robots are actually a good thing. The robots, the more trading we have, the more liquidity we have in the market that actually stabilizes and cushions the markets during big up and down days. The second part of your concern, I think, really worries me. Worries, worry, worries me. <laughs> that is the massive Federal Reserve intervention that we've had basically for the better part of the last decade, back when the president, President Trump, was calling it a bubble. You know, before he won, he called the market a bubble. Yeah. Now he calls it his bull market. But we could be starting to see some of that at one. Now, we've never seen this before. Trillions of dollars from the Fed with these higher rates. Some are saying it's starting to Are you but Quickly, before right I get right back now. to David Webb, are you buying right now? Are you buying any stocks, Jonathan? I, I'm, I'm sitting on my hand, Liz. You know, you look today. Are you, you worried? 350. Are you, I, I think you have. I am worried. Okay, you you saw 350 new 52-week lows, only a handful Quickly. of new 52-week highs. The yeah. trend is down. Uh, David Webb, Steve Jobs of Apple said famously he was always frustrated with President Obama. President Obama always talked about what he couldn't get done. And Steve Jobs said, I can think of a lot of things you can get done. You know, is tre President Trump getting any credit, credit for what he's trying to get done? No, he's not. And then, you know, look, the fundamentals are growing. There's a better floor out there for the markets. You look at where we are, the economy's grown. And for, you know, for the average American across uh, the board, they're not looking at whether Broadcom's going to increase its offer for Qualcomm, but they are going to get the, <laughs> the benefits of that as if Broadcom does close a $121 billion deal. They don't look at those numbers, but they look at what it means to them when, okay. they're, when their tools, their toys are cheaper. So the economy is growing. It's on a good trajectory. It's going to have its bear markets. It's going to have its intraday crashes in some point. But we have the triggers okay. that will protect us if that crash ever comes or goes further than yeah. this. And one of the cushions is the Fed may not raise interest rates next month. We'll see. Jonathan, David, thank you so much. We really appreciate your insights. Good to see you guys. Come back soon.